Shabbat Shalom Saints. Shalom and hi. How are you doing? Shalom, Shalom, Shalom Saints is another week. Happy Monday Saints. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom to all those of you here. Hallelujah. How are you doing? Shalom to all those of you joining. Sister Kita, Shalom. Nova Taxi, Shalom. Sister Geraldine Collins, Moses, man of God, Shalom. I'm happy to see you, Sister Geraldine. Sister Brenda, Shalom. I'm so sorry sometimes you cannot see me or I cannot see you. In fact, saints, I'm having problems with our live chat. Um, some of the moderators are not able to pin things. Some people are complaining that cannot join the live stream. For what reason? I don't know. But saints, I just want you to please pray. Continue to pray for this ministry because there is a person that is controlling the chat. A person that is blocking people from being notified. I don't know who is doing this, but we all know it's the enemy. So please keep this live stream under the blood of Jesus. Keep praying so that um, everybody will be here. There will be no hindrances for the saints to come and also for the moderators to do their job properly. So I want to apologize to all of you, moderators, to begin with. If you have, been, if you have difficulties in being notified, you cannot attend, you are typing and you cannot see what you type, you know, I cannot see you. It's not personal, it's not malice, it's not wickedness. Honestly, there is something wrong with the, with the chat. Thankfully, thank God, at least we are now able to write capital me and amen. Even that, they had blocked those, somebody blocked those words on this stream and I had to it was God that made me go to the settings and unblock these two words. So please, saints, my sincere apologies and continue to pray. So that number one, God will, uh, will unveil who is doing this, will expose the person. Secondly, now once they are exposed, I can block them and get rid of them because I can't be going through all this stress. It's too much. It's not right. It's not right on the moderators. It's not right on the saints coming here. It's not right. All right, saints. I'm sorry that I'm a bit upset today, but these things make me upset. Forgive me, okay? And please help me in prayer. When you are praying in your own time, say, Lord Jesus, um, we are asking you to take control of the live stream, the chat, and everything. And I'm sure God is not going to abandon us and allow these people to come here to destabilize us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Lord, beloved saints, you are welcome. I am so sorry that I'm starting the live streaming. You know, it's not nice, but forgive me. Anyway, saints, the title for this live stream is Deliverance from Hidden Curses. Oh, yes. Some of, some, of, some of us, we could be battling a certain curse that is speaking against us, but we don't know what we are fighting against unless God himself arises from his throne and begins to expose it. And saints, I want to tell you this. Certain curses are, are not caused by you. Specifically today, we are dealing of curses because of an evil association. There are certain curses that you will partake on because of evil association. And particularly today, the Bible is giving us an account because I'm going to give you the, 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 the scripture in a minute. But today, the main focus for what God is speaking today is that if we are not careful about the people that we keep around us, we can partake on the curse. And God can rain his anger against us because of our evil association. All right. So it is important that you are actively before the throne of God, asking him to expose every person in your life so that you will not partake on the curse. You will not reap on whatever it is that God is judging them. Okay. And I was asking God to... Show me what was the message for today. And God gave me this message. 
to remind you saints that we are about to cross over to 2024 right and you want god to unveil everything to show you everything you want god to be closer to you so you need the information you need the word and you need a word from god and you need somebody that is using to come and tell you i'm here to say to you that most of the problems that we have okay it is not because of our own fault because we done something against god no we are doing everything right we are praying we are fasting we are seeking the face of god we are doing everything that we are supposed to do as believers yet we are losing battles the enemy is winning the enemy is doing all sorts of evil things because of our evil association because of somebody we have allowed to be in our lives because of a certain friendship because of a certain relationship i don't know but allow the holy spirit to minister to you today so please beloved saints get your bibles ready pen and paper to take notes um i would like to also tell you that the scripture today is a bit lengthy it's only one okay so um i want you to all be patient with me okay God is speaking and let us all be patient. He has been patient with us. All right? Just have to tell you so you prepared. All right? So make sure you 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 get your Bibles ready and everything. All right, saints. Now, I want to also remind you that we are fasting up to the 31st of this month of December which is the last day of the year of 2023. Now, this day falls on a on a sunday right and we don't have a ministration on sunday so we're gonna have the holy communion and the, the the breaking of the fasting on the 30th although i am going to continue on the 31st all right saints so i'm just reminding you all that um you need your matzo bread also you will need your grape juice for holy communion right um i think this is it i don't have any other reminders that is all saints oh another thing don't forget that fridays are consecration days if you would like to consecrate anything to god from olive oil holy water whatever it is make sure you bring it on friday another thing i want to say make sure you bring water for consecration because some of you are sick some of you have infirmities and the, the 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 holy water is important for those of you who are ill so that you can drink that water and by faith you will be healed and restored in Jesus name okay hallelujah yes beloved that is it let me see I, you know sometimes i'm even finding hard to paint things but great glory be to god so saints Make sure you bring all these things for consecration on Friday. Um these are the reminders and last reminder, keep praying for our live stream. All right? I'm not going to go into detail about the fasting because time is limited and I need to get on with serious business because the scripture for today is quite lengthy, all right? And I have a lot to teach today. So let us consecrate this live stream to God. so that you can be in charge. Once again you are all welcome and if it's your first time, you are welcome I'm your host Sister Delila Dos Santos. This is a Christian platform um where we can all grow in Christ and and strengthen our walk with Christ daily. All right? Hallelujah. Father Lord in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your presence today. I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you because you are a wonderful father. You are precious, you are mighty, you are powerful to deliver, to heal and to restore. Thank you Lord for allowing us to see another day. Thank you Lord for sparing our lives. Thank you Lord for putting our enemies to shame. Thank you Lord for allowing us to eat, for allowing us Father Lord to have clean water. For allowing us to be dressed and clothed Father Lord. Thank you for our children. Thank you for our parents those of us who still have at least one parent. Thank you Father Lord for our friendships in Christ. Thank you Father Lord for sustaining us. Thank you Father Lord for not giving up on us. 
And as we join together, Father Lord, in your presence, we ask you collectively as your children for total forgiveness of our sins and transgressions and iniquities. All the things that we have said that we have done in which we have offended you, O Lord. Father, be merciful. Forgive us. Remember that the blood of your son Yeshua was shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. And Father, be merciful. Uplift us, O Lord. Fill us with your mercy. Fill us, Father Lord, with your forgiveness so that we can continue to go forward in full reconciliation with you. Father Lord, I dedicate the lives of your children that came today to hear your voice. And I'm asking you today, take possession of their lives. Take possession of our hearts, our souls, our spirits, our bodies. Take possession, Father Lord, of our finances. Take possession of our health. Take possession of all the areas of our lives, including our children that are at school. Lord Jesus, I cover each one of us here on this live stream with your precious blood. I cover our children at school with your precious blood. Even those that have adult children. Father Lord, we, we cover them with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I am asking you that you begin to bind all principalities and rulers of darkness and evil and demonic spirits seeking to steal, kill and destroy, cause problems, humiliation cause all sorts of tribulation and sadness and sorrow and reproach. Oh, Father Lord, bind them with the everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire. Cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever. Never to have any power, control and dominion and authority against us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father Lord, I'm asking you today, protect our children and deliver us all from all sorts of retaliations from the kingdom of darkness. Deliver our children, Father, from all sorts of retaliation uh, of the kingdom of darkness. Father Lord, I'm asking you, encamp your holy angels around us to protect us and to deliver us from all evil. Father Lord, arise in your power, arise in your authority, arise in your sovereignty to take control of this live stream, to have dominion to have authority over this live stream so that your will will come to pass and not the will of the enemy. I curse everything that is trying to come against our gathering here in the mighty name of Jesus. I curse everything that has been done against the live stream, against the chat. Father Lord, I pray that there will be no disruptions. Father Lord, that your will will prevail, that you will speak, that you will save, that you will redeem, that you will heal, resurrect, Lord God, and give meaning and purpose to each one of us here today, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, arise, O Lord, and have dominion. And let every witch, every wizard, and every warlock targeting us for evil. Let them all from their covens fall down and die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. For it is written in your word, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Oh, Father Lord, I pray that today there will be judgments pronounced on those seeking to send arrows, seeking to destabilize. Let the arrows return back to sender by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I saturate this live stream with the precious blood of your son Jesus. I drench our environments with the precious Precious blood of your son Jesus. Cover our air gates, eye gates, mouth gates with your precious blood. Father Lord, I pray, manifest your power, manifest your deliverance today again. Speak to us, Lord God, as you want. Father Lord, use me continuously as a vessel, Lord God, to bring forth, Father Lord, salvation through your word so that there will be repentance, deliverance, healing, restoration, restoration resurrection power repentance Lord God and in the mighty name of Jesus Father I thank you for all that you did in the past for all that you are doing and about to do in Jesus precious name we pray and we agree amen amen and amen thank you Jesus thank you Abba Father thank you glory Jesus so today saints our scripture is very simple Joshua chapter 7 Joshua chapter 7 I hope you all have your Bibles okay so we can start Joshua chapter 7 but the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing for Achan the son of Carmi the son of Zebdi the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took off the accursed thing and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. 
And Joshua sent men to Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven, on the east of Bethel, and spake, spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite A, and make not all the people to labor tighter, for there are but few. So there went up tighter of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of A. And the men of A smote of them about thirty and six men. For they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them into the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted, and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes, and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord, until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God! Wherefore hast thou at all brought these people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall en en environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel have sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies before they were accursed. Neither will I be with you and any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Up, sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves again tomorrow. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. O Israel, thou cast not stand before thy enemies, until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning thereof, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall, shall take shall come by households. And the households which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he hath because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath roughly fallen in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by the tribes and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah and he took the family of the Zarites and he brought the family of the Zarites man by man and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give I pray thee glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils of godly Babylonish garments and two hundred shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weighed, when then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of the tent and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messages. They ran unto the tent and behold, it was hid in his tent. 
and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. After they all, they had stoned them with stones and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Acre unto this day. Hallelujah. Saints, this is not a, a, a scripture that you should just take it lightly. It's something that perhaps you would like to go after and read a bit more. But I'm here basically to say something to you. There are certain curses that believers are experiencing in life because of the people they have decided to associate themselves with. Certain people are under bondage because they are a part of a certain ministry. And in that ministry, there is a certain hidden sin that is making God angry and upset. Therefore, the entire congregation is now suffering because the pastor is hiding something or, or, or a sin, or maybe perhaps... People that are in charge of, 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 of prayer, the prayer warriors, I don't know. But there are certain curses that will fall upon a certain congregation because of a particular sin that is hidden, unconfessed. But there is other curses, saints, that is because of the people we decide to keep with us. That we decide to call friends, that we decide to call best friend. There are some people that when you keep an association with them because of the sin and the anger of God that is upon them and the curse of God that is upon them. You will be under the same curse because of association. You cannot afford in this time in your life to be associated associated with people that are cursed people whom god has no covenant with because they broken the covenant with god people who don't want to 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 surrender to god they just have a facade um, they masquerade themselves as something but deep down they are hiding demonic things we can see here that israel the children of the Most High God, they were about to take possession of the lands God had promised them. And Joshua, the servant of the living God, he was making an, an assessment of where to go, what to conquer, and how many men to send to certain places. And we can see that the children of God were losing battles. Some of you here, you are just like Joshua. Losing one spiritual battle to the next. You pray, you fast, but you are not victorious. You, 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 you tithe and you give your offering. Yes, you, the devil is winning. And you don't understand why. Why am I not winning the battle? Why is it that I'm coming from one battle to the next just to be oppressed again, to be conquered? It is because of whom you are associating yourself with. Joshua, he had to come to a point where he decided that, look, I'm going to consult the Lord and find out why are we losing battles? Why are we unable to possess our possession? What it is that is making us now defeated before our enemies, even a little populace, a little gathering of wicked people. We cannot conquer that space. We cannot go with our men and take possession. And he began to ask God questions. He began to, to go before God. This, he knew that something was wrong because what God has spoken over Israel and his mantle was not coming to pass. Some of you here, you need to begin to do as Joshua did. You need to begin to do as Joshua did. If you are losing and the devil is winning, go and ask God. Joshua was a mighty man of valor, was a man of God, was a powerful man, yet he was losing battles. He was unable to have victory against the enemy. And it was not because of him being a sinner. 
Joshua was not sinning before God. In fact, he was an honorable man, keeping the commandments of God, keeping a pure life, not living in sin, but yet he was losing the battle because there was a man in the midst of the Israelites called Achan that had an accursed item in his tent. And therefore, because of his sin, he contaminated everyone in Israel. Everybody was defeated because of his sin. Everybody was under oppression because of his sin. You see that? The Bible is real. I'm not here telling what I want. I'm giving you facts, the word of God. I gave you a whole chapter I read. And I'm saying here today that it doesn't matter. If you are living holy, you are doing everything you're supposed to do. If you notice that still there is no advancement, no productivity, no victory, then you have to do it like Joshua. Go before God. Lord, what is going on? How are we going to be able to stand in the midst of our adversaries? How are we going to be able to stand here and not be afraid? Because now our reputation is at stake. The people that are around us will know that we are weaklings, that the Lord is not on our side anymore and they will begin to attack. Because Joshua had the mantle of responsibility to protect the Israelites. He was the leader after Moses had passed away. I'm here to say this. You are just like Joshua in your family. You are like Joshua. You have the responsibility to pray that God will unveil who is the person in your family that is keeping an accursed item, that has violated God's commandments, that is keeping things that they're not supposed to keep. And because of them, your family is facing infirmity, poverty, limitation, stagnation, limitation delay shame and disgrace you have to come before god because only god has the answers to everything can you believe god was was angered against israel god was already had turned his face against israel and joshua didn't know you see the importance of prayer, the importance of coming and listen to the word of God, the importance of coming and consult God concerning your situation, concerning your difficulty, concerning whatever it is that is not going well. Some people think that, oh, <laughs> we just pray and if God willing, it is God's will that you know the truth. It is God's will that you know why are you in that predicament? But how will you know if you don't consult him? How will you know if you don't go before him? Some of you need to shut down your social media. Shut down talking to people and go before God so he can reveal things to you. You are too distracted. You are not focused enough. Joshua was, was up and about sending men to fight all these people, but he never cared to ask God, are you with us going there? Are you with us? In this battle that we are about to go, are you with us? He did not consult. He just went because he was assuming that God was with him. He was assuming that God was fighting for him. Some of you are assuming that God is fighting your battle. Assuming that God is protecting you. Assuming, 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 but you are not answer, ask, asking God questions. Be very careful. How many men did Joshua lost in that conquest trying to go to that to the Amorites and take over. How many men did they lose? I don't want you to be losing anything else. That's why I'm here obedient to God. I could be doing other things. But I'm here as a voice. As a mouthpiece of God to say that. Don't continue to live with hidden curses in your life. Some of you is just bearing one curse. You are pampering another curse. Pampering this and pampering that and just keep going. Under a curse because you did not care to inquire from God what is going on. It is when God. When Joshua surrendered himself to God. Him and the elders of Israel decided to go on consecration. Joshua rent his clothes. Means he tore his garments. They fasted. Whenever you see the Bible talk about 
dust upon their heads. That means ashes and sackcloth. That means that Joshua and the elders of Israel fasted for God to manifest, for God to begin to show the root of the curse. Isn't that what we are doing? We are fasting. We are praying. We are inquiring from God. What is the source of my problems? Oh Lord, why are you not fighting for me? Why are we losing battles constantly? But I'm here to say, beloved saints, God is not going to allow us to go through whatever it is without his hand. Without his power, without whatever it is that it's needed for you to be able to come out. So God spoke. He said to Moses that look, he said to Joshua, get thee up. In other words, I've heard your prayer. I've heard your supplication. I heed to your fasting. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Why are you still on the ground? Get up. I want to speak to you. God is saying, get up. I want to speak to you. Israel has sinned. Oh yes, your family has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant. They broken my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have, they have even taken off the accursed thing and have also stolen and de dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff. So Achan, God was beginning to reveal that, that, that your, the Israelites are not sanctified. They are under my wrath. They are under my judgment and they are accursed because there is somebody Hiding an accursed item in, 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 in Israel. There is one among you that is hiding something. And God began to take um, Joshua on a prophetic assignment. First, God revealed what tribe. And after the tribe, he began to reveal what clan. And from the clan, he began to tell what family. And from the family, he gathered the entire family and God revealed that he was Achan. And filled with the mantle of the prophetic and the authority of God, Joshua asked Achan, Son, tell me the truth. Isn't that how the Bible says? And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him. In other words, stop lying and tell me the truth. What it is that you are hiding that is accursed, that has now made God angry against Israel, has made God to, 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 to place a curse over Israel so that we will not win our battles, we will lose and be defeated. Confess now. What have you done? Don't hide it anymore. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. So he confessed. And the confession was, When I saw among the spoils of goodly Babylonian garments and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I covered them and I took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of the tent and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messages and they ran unto the tent and behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. So I'm here to say, saints, some people that we call family members, some people that we call friends, some people that we are close to for whatever reason, I'm here to say that these people could be the ones responsible for the reason why you cannot go forward. You could be living with somebody in your house and they have cursed items because they are consulting oracles. They are consulting witches and wizards and warlocks. They are doing the astrology when you're not seeing them. They are doing maple, whatever it is, astral map. They are having, having the astral map read. They are doing the most inside of your house. And this could be your children. It could be your parents. 
It could be the people that you share that house with and you don't know. And because they are doing these things and you are under that roof. You are having now financial difficulties, health problems, nightmares. You cannot sleep. You are constantly battling things that don't even make sense. It is your responsibility from henceforth, according to this scripture, to do it like Joshua. Go before God. Say, Lord, this house where I live, I cannot... I cannot vow that everybody here is obeying you that everybody here is keeping your commandment but i'm asking you oh lord unveil them expose them so that i will not be a partaker of this sin and some of you that still live with certain people you're gonna have to pray for god to disassociate you from whatever mess they are doing some of you you is your parents and you are still a minor or you are not in position of moving out. You still can break the covenant if you pray. Because the minute that God begins to show you that they are doing this and that. You will pray to say, Lord, I sever ties with them. I have no part in these demonic activities that these people are doing. I reject, I renounce and I curse it to death. I have no part with whatever it is that they are doing. And many Christians, many so-called believers, because of what? Greed. Because of being covetous, just like Achan. They are doing things that God has told them not to do to make money. Such as keeping certain sensual relationships for money. There is a lot of ladies out there that claim to be um, women of God, men of God. Some of them in relationship with you, they're your girlfriend and boyfriend, I don't know. That are doing illegal activities to make money. They are sleeping around and then they come and break bread with you. You are going to partake of the sin. You are going to partake of the iniquity. Because you don't care to investigate who walks with you, who, who breaks bread with you. You don't care to investigate. You don't care to ask God. It's time for you to ask God. Do you want me to be in fellowship with this best friend? Do you really want me to be in this relationship with this young lady, with this young man? Is this the person that you want me to keep around me? Are these people walking with you or against you, Lord? Because I don't want to have any friendship, any relationship where the person is violating your commandments that you have cursed and therefore I will partake of their sin. Don't fall for it. It can cost you inheritance. It cost Joshua the inheritance. They lost. They were supposed to take possession of that land of the Amorites. And they couldn't. Their enemies had completely put them to shame and killed them and chased them out. You have to ask God, Lord, every accursed person in my life or any accursed behavior or any accursed thing in my life, remove it, reveal and remove it. I want no part with it. I want to cross in 2020 to 2024 in victory and not in curse and not any under any judgment. It is the word of God. You are not here to be in agreement with me because though I did not write the Bible. You are here to be in agreement with thus says the Lord. And this is a warning. Some of you, the, some of you in immorality. Sensual activity immediately puts you in covenant with a person. Sensual activity immediately puts you in covenant with a person. All right. If you are in any sensual activity, it immediately puts you in covenant with a person, whether you like it or not. If they are stealing, just if they are lying, whatever it is that they are doing against God, you are under their judgment. You are under their curse. Let me tell you something. Even if they, are, they have uh, familiar curses against them, pending against them, you are going to partake of it. I'm telling you. And that goes as well whom you decide to do business with. If you shake hands to do a business with a person that analyzes people, 
that doesn't doesn't mind doing wickedness to go ahead in life and you shake hands with them and you make them your business partner you break bread with them you share profit with them you are sharing also not of the profit not only of their profit you are sharing also of the curse i'm telling you even where you spend your money a certain restaurant certain place that you spend your money, a certain supermarket, begin to ask God, where should you shop? Where do you need to go to do this and do that? Where you need to go to do your hair? You that have a barber and you have a... Sp it's time to ask God questions. You cannot continue to be defeated. You cannot continue to live under a curse because of your association with other people. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. How many people were unalive because they were at the, at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people? They themselves did not do anything, but because they were giving somebody a lift, they were giving somebody a ride. They decided to attend a certain birthday celebration. They decided to go to a certain place that God already has no, had, had no hand of protection over those people. And they are not here to tell you the story. How many people? You can see here that a whole nation because of one man was under God's judgment and a curse was pronounced against them and they didn't know it. I don't know whom God is talking to, but some of you here going from one battle to the next, no victory. One infirmity to the next, no victory. You need to ask God. Lord, I've prayed, I've fasted, I've tied, I've given my offering, yet I'm not coming out. What is going on, Lord? Father, Lord, show me what, what, is, what it is that is going on. Just like how you revealed to Joshua that the source of his problem was an accursed item that was in a certain a tent in Israel. And he, in the, you began to move him in the prophetic to, to find out exactly who was doing what and who was hiding what. Lord, I want to move in the same so that I will no longer be defeated. So that I will no longer be, be, be conquered my, by my enemies, mocked by my adversaries, but I will have the victory. Come on now. The Bible says that is only when the Israelites gather and stoned Achan and his family to death and burn them to ashes. That the anger of the Lord was lifted. Until you remove them from your life. Until you break covenant with them. Until you sever relationship with them. The anger of the Lord will continue to speak against you. The anger of the Lord will be very much against you. Because you are keeping them around you. It's not everybody that should be crossing over to 2024 with you. Because as they cross over with you to 2024, they're crossing over with you with the curses, with whatever it is that is going on. Say, I will not partake of anyone's sin. I will not partake of anyone's curse. I refuse to do it. I did it and I'm not doing it again in 2024. It must be broken in this 2023. It must be severed in this 2023 because I'm crossing over. Brand new now. I'm a new creation in Christ. I cannot continue to be a partaker of people's curses and iniquities and whatever it is that is speaking against them. I refuse to be under this kind of hindrance again. Not in 2024 again. It's enough. I had enough. I must cross over in victory. I'm tired. This is the time for me to fulfill my assignment. It is not the time to be accommodating people's curses, accommodating people's defeat, accommodating people's whatever situation that is with them, that God is not with them and now is transferring to me, including what my parents have done, siblings. I don't know. I want to say this to you. If you live in a certain house with people, time to ask God, who is who in this house? It is not being, some of you think that, ah, these are my family members. <clears throat> if your family member is visiting shrines, 
visiting witches and wizards and warlocks, looking for potions, bringing these potions to the house, bringing food consecrated to idols, bringing accursed items to your house. It will not be well with you. Oh, but Sister Dalila, I, I don't do those things. Joshua didn't do any of it. But he was living in, in his, they live in tents, right? They had a territory. He was with them. So God doesn't care. He comes and he judges everybody. Okay? Some people are keeping Ouija board in your home. And they could be your children. And that is why you have a certain infirmity that does not go. Some of your children could be keeping cursed books. Books that are, everything that is cursed is everything that goes against God. It could be a book about magic, about spells. It could be a book of, of immorality, filth. It could be corn material. I don't know. You have to ask God to reveal it to you. Some of you, God will direct you to go and look under the bed. Some of you, God will direct you to go and look at you at, at the wardrobe when they're not around. God will direct you just like how he directed Joshua in the prophetic that Joshua knew where to go, what to do and whom to summon. He will guide you as well because you are praying. You are asking God questions. Okay. You are asking God questions, valid questions. And he cares. He told Joshua here, I was waiting for you to consult me. I was waiting for you to speak to me. Get up from, from your fasting. Get up from your supplication. And sp let me speak to you. God is saying, get up from that fasting. Get up from that prayer closet. I need to speak to you that you need to be now investigating who is under your roof. You need to be investigating who is that person you call your bestie. You need to be investigating who are the people in charge of my congregation. You need to be investigating in prayer. Who is my boss? Who are the people that I'm associated with? Because I'm not going to associate with a curse anymore. I refuse to be a partaker of the iniquity in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This message is not for everybody. If, people, if you don't want to understand God on a level that he is sovereign, he does not care about your opinions. He is sovereign over your life. He can take you out anytime. He can take your life. You are here assuming that you will be alive, but you might not be alive tomorrow to even surrender to God, to even ask him questions. So take heed of this warning, of this one, this one opportunity that God is giving you that it could be that is the last one. To come before God with a humble heart, sincere heart, ask him genuine questions. And surrender your life to him. I remember a story, a testimony that I'm going to give to you here. Two sons decided to go to their mother's home to clean the house because she was elderly. So they were cleaning the house. They were getting rid of things. And that lady used to be very sick in and out of hospital all the time. Not in good health. And the sons were cleaning the house, getting rid of stuff. And one of the sons found a satanic book, like a Bible, like a black book of spells. All right. And one of the sons was a pastor. And he's confronted his mom and says, what is this? How do you have this book in this house? Confronted the lady. And she said, oh, it's your sister that gave me the book, but I've never read it. I was just keeping it in that safe. And they took the book and destroyed the book. So I'm here to say that even with that son being a pastor, perhaps he was praying. Something was not going well with him in his ministry. I don't know. But they were led, the two brothers, to go and clean the mother's house. And they found this book and got rid of the book. God will lead you. 
It will lead you in such a way that they will not deny being a part of something that they shouldn't be a part of. Say somebody says I'm living with somebody that is in drugs and what what you do is that when you pray, you say, Lord, I sever all the physical and spiritual attachments with this person. I reject they I, I, I curse to death. These sins, I'm not a partaker. In Jesus' name, you tell them that I don't agree with this lifestyle. I don't agree with this. I'm not going to be a part of your curse. Be honest with them and ask God to shift you, to move you to another place. Ask God, say, Lord, sever me from this person. It is godly to ask that, sever me. It's either you save them and you redeem them or you take me away from this environment. God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. I have another testimony here to tell you a friend of mine. Her cousin that was anti-clockwise. Um, she needed a place to stay because she was trying to rent an apartment. And she said, oh, while I'm looking for... Um, a place to stay. Can I stay over your house? And she has two little girls. And because she's a Christian lady, a nice lady, she said yes to the cousin. So the cousin came and stayed. That same night, that, that Christian lady could not sleep. The Holy Spirit was convicting her. The Holy Spirit was wrestling with her. Who are you keeping under your roof? You are keeping these, these demons that are under this person. This person does not want Jesus. In fact, they don't believe in God. They don't believe that God is real. All this kind of stuff. She didn't have that love for Jesus. She just wanted to take advantage that the cousin had a nice place. And the Holy Spirit arrested that sister and said, Get rid of this. Tell her to go. Or else you will be partaker of her sin. And it was difficult for that sister to do that, but she wrote a letter at night and left it for the cousin. The cousin read the letter, got her stuff and went to live with her anti-clockwise girlfriend. She's a girl as well. And because this sister took that bold step of telling her to leave, Although it was hard, she went and reported this sister to the family that she's a wicked person, blah, blah, blah. And this sister boldly said, I cannot keep under my roof somebody that is a curse before my God, that is in violation with the commandments of God. Even her own parents were against this sister. And she was lonely for a long time because her family did not want to speak to her. But now they, they're now speaking to her. The parents realized that they were too harsh on this young lady and that she was right in her decision. Christ over everything. So you're going to have to make some choices. Some of you, you are, you are about to break bread du 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 during this celebration time with somebody that you know is against God, hates God. And everything that God stands for, they hate it. You are going to have to make some important decisions because severing ties with accursed people and people who are bringing a curse into your life, it's not going to be easy because sometimes there are our siblings. There are people that we have an attachment because they are our siblings, they are family members. There are people that we have a, an attachment to them. But you're going to have to choose to be closer to God or to be closer to these people just because they are your family. Man. Who is your family? When they came, the apostles came to Jesus and says, your mother and your brother outside. He says, who is my mother? Who is my brother? But those who do the will of my father. I don't care how much you love them because they, they are nice. They give you good gifts. They are warm to you. Sometimes they can be of help. They give you things. You're going to have to make a choice. Either God or people. 
you're gonna have to make a choice i had to make a choice that was not easy for me and i'm gonna give my personal testimony i used to have a friend a person that i really liked a lot that would defend me even if i wasn't around he said don't speak about my sister like that he, this this friend really really loved me every time we went out he would pay me coffee tea bring me drinks very nice person but god said to me although you love this person and they love you they are anti-clock wise you cannot keep such a person with you these are not people to keep around you or to keep around your children and i had to depart from that friendship and they claim to be christians so they know that what they're doing is wrong but god says sever ties and i did and i cried when i sat down and i remember the precious moments i spent with that friend and the lovely words of encouragement and upliftment i cried but then i understand god is bigger than all of that He's going to bring new people. He's going to bring, look, he's brought me you. I have you here every day that come and support me. Come and spend time in the presence of the most high God with me. You help me. You encourage me. You build me up. Certain people, you're going to have to leave them behind. Because they are compromising your walk with Christ. They are bringing into your life battles and curses that you have no business dealing with it. You have your own stuff to deal with. But you are dealing with the curse. You are dealing with the burden. It's not worth it. Some of them, this period of festivity, they are drinking, doing all sorts of things that you know that your God does not approve. And when they call you, it's just to give you a report of who he, they, they, they slept with, what kind of club they went to, and this, and who said what, and how, what they, and even the conversation, conversation that you have with them is shifting you from a place of holiness to now you beginning to entertain the things of the world. And you beginning to covet what it is that they've got going on in the world that is against your god now you are entertaining thoughts things in your mind that are not godly because of your association with them your mind is now becoming to to be is beginning to get a, a, a filthy your thoughts are not pure anymore because conversation corrupts as well your prayer time the time that you spend with god that conversation is coming to take the seed of the word of god that has been deposited in you now you are operating in, in in coveting the world and the things of this world and you are not in in holiness neither you are in righteousness is it worth it it's not worth it sometimes walking with god feels very lonely because you don't have the big celebration anymore. You don't, you are not out there doing the most because you decided that I'm going to walk with Christ. I'm going to obey him. I'm going to follow him. Naturally, the process is that people will begin to leave. Some of them, you don't even have to say anything. They will begin to leave your presence. And some of you, the reason why you cannot have the victory against witchcraft powers, because you are feeding the witches, you are giving them gifts, you are empowering their altars, you are inviting them to your house, you are calling them. So how is that? How are you going to have the victory? You go to their homes, they are burning sage. And that demonic, demonic spirits that are called by the burning of the sage and the incense are now following you home. Now your finances is upside down. Your health is everywhere. Everything is in disarray. Because of your demonic association with them, you are a partaker. They have consulted the cauldron. They have gone to do things in the spiritual realm. They are now doing the most. And when they are doing it, God is finding you guilty because you went and had supper with them. You went and broke bread with them. You went and borrowed money from them. You see? How will you be victorious? How can you be victorious? Even if it's your boss. You are there to render a service. You are not there to partake in the sin. You can say, Lord, I consecrate my position here into your hands. I'm here to serve to earn a living. And 
when they give you their money. That is your salary. All right? Tied. 10% give it to God to consecrate. So that whatever it is that they are doing, it's not going to affect your stream of income. You are there to, to, to do a service. That's it. That is where your relationship with them starts and ends. You getting in, doing your job and getting your paycheck and that's it. If they inviting you for dinner, you says, I can't, I'm going to church. If they inviting you to do something extra, I have no time. You are only there to provide, to, to do a job and that's it. And that is where your relationship with them ends. Finito. End of. Some people that you know well and good that they are doing things they are no good, are illegal activities, whatever it is, they come to your house to give you a gift. You say that they thank you, but I cannot accept your gift. If they're offended, leave them. Would you rather offend God or offend men? What is better? You know well and good they are doing this, 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 and that. It says no judgment. You do what you want is your life, but please don't include me in it. I don't want to be a partaker of whatever it is that you are doing. That's it. How do you serve a tithe? Being honest. I've given my life to Christ. I cannot attend the club with you. I've given my life to Christ. I cannot go and, and buy that thing for you. It's as simple as that. It's not a big task, impossible. Ta just make a stand for righteousness. Make a stand to keep God's commandments. And whomsoever it is that is doing the most to drag you into, into the curse, drag you in whatever it is, it will not prosper because you have already seven ties with them. If it's in your house, they are now buying drinks. Hey, we bought drinks so, hey, on Christmas. They come and, and have a drink. He said, no, I, I'm not allowed to. I'm not, my God does not allow me to indulge in these, in these alcoholic beverages. I will be spending the day praying and meditating on the word of God. Watch how they alone will just not interested anymore. You, you, they will say in, in, in their terms, you're killing their vibe. You're killing their vibes. So they will leave you alone. But some of you, you compromise. Oh, but it's my best friend. I know it's in a club. Her, I know that her birthday is in a club. But, you know, she's been so good. I'm going to go to the club. And then you begin to compromise. The day you go to the club with them. Tomorrow you accept a dream. Drink. The next day you are bringing a boy home. The next day you are now, you are now buying things, doing things. You see how comprom compromising grows and uh, into exponential levels that now you cannot take control of your salvation. You've lost it. It's time to ask God to expose every hidden curse in our lives. Whether that hidden curse is a person, whether that hidden curse is an object in our home, sometimes we move into homes and we don't know who lived there before. It's time for you to consecrate that house to God, to, for you to begin to ask God to cleanse that house with this precious blood and to show you what it is that is a demonic deposit and a curse deposit in that house that God needs to show you what it is in order for you to be able to get it out, burn it and get rid of it. I'm going to give you another testimony. I remember that we were young and my mother was going through a lot of nightmares, problems, things were going wrong. And she was asking God, but Lord, what is it that is going on? Why is my life like this? There is, must be something wrong. And my mom was not a powerful Christian back then, but she was genuinely shocked and she was asking God, how is it that there is so much problems one after the other and I'm having these nightmares and can't sleep at night, no peace in my own home. And she says that she heard the voice of God that they said, go to your bathroom. And in my bathroom, there is like a safe on top. No one goes there. It's just where we keep suitcases and stuff. Only when we are traveling, we take things and, and sometimes to clean. It's not a place that we go often, right? And, go, and the Holy Spirit directed my mom to go to that place and look. And she went and she, 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 God said, look at your left. And as she looked at her left, she found a little chocolate, you know, like a um, Nesquik or those tins of, of, of cocoa or chocolate. You know them. And she says, hmm, who put this thing here? It was not me. 
I will never put such a thing in here. And this is the place where we keep our stuff. So my mom was very shocked. She was, nah. Um, so she said the minute she 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 held the 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 the, the teen she said palpitations she she was shaking like a leaf she got down and 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 got directed to go outside to the veranda she went and opened and got a, and the teen that was closed so tightly she had to get like a knife to get it up and open it she, when she opened that little teeny had beads hair bones all sorts of witchcraft were inside of that thing at that time many people used to come to visit my mom cousins friends all sorts of people it's not like now you know when we are not strong with god anybody comes saying they're visiting you and even had um ashes and my mom got that thing and she got rid of it she burned it right and the contents that were inside. And in conversation with another lady, she was talking and, you know, confiding. She said, well, that is to kill. The contents that were in that tin, those things are normally done as voodoo to kill. You see how God loves us and if we genuinely ask him, he will show us. And my mom wasn't much of a stronger believer then. It was way in the 80s, long ago, I was a child. So be in a habit of questioning things. Ask God, even in your own home, you don't know. It could be that somebody that hates you place something on a vase, place something somewhere in your home. And because you are not praying, you are not, not asking God to expose things. Those things are there and your children are always sick. Your children cannot move forward. Seeking for jobs cannot get jobs. And you don't know what is the cursed item in your own home. It could be even in your office. Do you know that you can have so co-workers that hate you? They can put things under your table. They can put things under your chair, under your seat. You sit on those demonic items and every day you are fighting battles. But you don't understand that is your co-worker that wants your position that is doing that. Not everybody is a believer. People seek for power anywhere they can get it. And if it's from the devil, so be it for them. They don't care. Don't be a victim. God is speaking. Joshua was not a man that was wicked. He was observing God's commandments. He was obeying God. He was following God. He was doing everything that God was telling him to do. Yet, he found himself in that situation, him and the Israelites. You see how people infiltrated in our churches, infiltrated in our homes as family members, friends, can cause so much damage. And even, look how many people died in Israel. How many of us have lost family members? Just like that. Because when we lose them, we just go to the funeral and mourn their death. We don't ask, Lord, why did this person die? Was it natural or, or, or what? What is the cause? You see us, I, I don't know other cultures, but I know a little bit of other cultures. But in African culture, when somebody dies, especially if there's a young person, the first question, what happened? They will sit down, the parents, sit down, the family and the community will have a discussion as what happened here. Because we, we don't take it lightly and then buy casket and all this without finding out what is the problem. And then we will begin to call the pastors. We will begin to call the prayer warriors in that community to investigate what is going on in this family. But we are living lives as if, hey, as the so-and-so passed away, nothing was wrong with them. They were fit. And then sudden death, like, and we just, hey, mourn the passing of the person and sit down. Mm. And some of us that are wicked, we begin to accuse people just because we don't like them. Because not all of them are good people. Some of those elders and some of them are, are wicked. But I'm saying to you, don't sit down and allow people in your family to be sick. People in you, you cannot rise to do anything. You rise to fall again. And, 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 and you go from one situation to another situation and you sit down. God willing, next year it will be better. God willing, next year I'll break through. Yes, God willing, but are you praying for God's will to manifest?
Are you praying for God to reveal things? Are you praying for God to prove himself strong in your situation? We are fasting saints. We have clothed ourselves with sackcloth. Ashes and sackcloth. We are castigating our physical bodies so that God can re reveal things, so that God can manifest, so that God can speak to us. And perfect, perfect scripture, Joshua chapter 7. Let us inquire from the Lord. My children that rise to fall, what is the problem? My parents that are constantly sick, what is the problem? My finances that are always in disarray, what is the problem? My health, what is the problem? My business, my ministry, my career, my education, what is the problem, Jehovah? I'm not here to seek solutions from men. I'm here to inquire from you, the living God, what is the situation? I need a spiritual breakthrough. I'm tired of suffering. I'm tired of being defeated and being mocked. I will not be a casualty. Neither my family in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray, beloved saints. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for divine revelation that came through, through your scripture in Joshua chapter 7. We thank you, Father Lord, because there is no problem that we go through that has no solution, that has no explanation from the lens of the Bible. Thank you, Father Lord, for divine revelation. Thank you, Father Lord, that you are the fountain of all wisdom and you are willing to reveal things to all those who diligently seek you, who diligently are in your face, Lord God, seeking you answering questions lord god and seeking to be delivered father lord we know that without you we are powerless without you we cannot do anything without you father lord we will lose battles and never be able to rise again but we know that lord if we seek you honestly if we are constantly in your presence meditating in your holy word seeking for your face oh lord we know that you will reveal yourself oh father lord just like how you revealed yourself to joshua and the elders that were fasting and praying and clothing themselves with sackcloth and it was in your face Father Lord asking Father Lord for the root and the source of their sorrow and problem. Oh Father Lord we ask you today reveal all things to us Lord God as we repent from all our sins up to 50 generations before us of those who've offended you Lord God. We repent on behalf of our parents. We repent on behalf of our children. We repent on behalf of our siblings aunties, uncles, nephews, nieces, all our family members, we come before you, Lord God. And with a humble heart and with the desire, Father Lord, to hear from you today, Lord God, so that we can have answers to our concerns, answers to our problems. Oh, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Bible says that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, God of Joshua, arise in your majesty, arise in all your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, to give us answers, to manifest your presence, to deliver us once for all. Oh, Father Lord, let all angels of poverty clear from the gates of our breakthroughs today in Jesus' mighty name. Remove our names from the book of financial embarrassment in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything representing our prosperity in the dark world, receive fire now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, our God, teach our hands to prosper beyond measure in the mighty name of Jesus. Reveal the root and the source of our sorrow. Oh, Oh, Father Lord, unveil things. Oh, Father Lord, uproot from our lives everybody and everything that has not been planted by you, Father Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Our wealth, hear the word of the Lord. You shall win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus, deliver our money into our hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, ancient serpent in our foundation that has swallowed our potential, vomit it and die in the mighty name of Jesus. We use the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to wash our hands and our entire body and make them clean today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father Lord, we know that the Bible says in Psalm 11, 
and free. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Father Lord, arise from us. And Father Lord, rebuild the foundation. Oh, everything that has been corrupted, tainted by the devil, restore, resurrect as we repent, Lord God, and reveal so that we can come in agreement with your word, so that we can begin to do things your way, Lord God. Oh, Father Lord, your word says in Jeremiah 30, 23, Behold, the with wind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing with wind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. Let every wicked personality troubling us, whether in the spirit or in the physical. Oh, Father Lord, I pray that you will, Father Lord, destroy them once for all in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible goes further and says in Job chapter 11, 12, 20, but the eyes of the wicked shall fail and they shall not escape and their hope shall be as the given up of the ghost. Let every wicked person fighting our children, fighting our health, our finances, our career, and our ministries. Oh, Father Lord, let them give up the ghost. Let them give up the ghost according to Job eleven twenty. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father Lord, we pray that you will deliver us today. We pray that you will not allow Satan to continue to oppress us, to keep us bound in the mighty name of Jesus. Our God, roll away every stone of hardship and slavery from our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the power to achieve our destiny go faster and fall upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. We command every spirit of, of, of un, unfortunate ending to be bound in every area of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, blood of Jesus, blot out every evil mark of witchcraft in our lives, in the lives of our children, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh almighty God by your divine mercy and favor speedily connect us with our destiny, help us in the mighty name of Jesus, mighty hands of Jehovah, mighty hands of Jehovah, correct any disorder, any disorder in our lives, marriages, businesses, in our wombs, all our organs, in our bodies and in our children's lives, super naturally in the mighty name of Jesus our father in heaven if we are walking opposite to your agenda stop us by fire in the mighty name of Jesus all the problems we have caused with our mouths be reversed be reversed be reversed in the mighty name of Jesus be reversed be reversed be reversed in the mighty name of Jesus oh father lord we pray that today you will, Father Lord, manifest your power. Manifest your anointing that breaks yokes. Manifest, Father Lord, your power. Manifest your power, Lord God. And begin to break yokes in our homes. Father Lord, everything that has been buried in our homes, Lord God, that is a deposit from the marine kingdom, a deposit from the satanic kingdom. Father Lord, I pray that as, as you have given Joshua divine revelation to know in the camp of the Israelites who was hiding who when he was found to be Achan. Reveal every Achan in our lives. Reveal every agent of darkness in our lives. Every Achan must be exposed in our children's lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every Achan must be exposed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Arrows in the hands of household strong men. Backfire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spiritual bullet fired against our households and wickedness die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every inherited battle in our lives die in the mighty name of Jesus. We reject every spirit of backwardness in the mighty name of Jesus. Our progress shall not be terminated in the mighty name of Jesus. We curse every work of darkness to dry up the roots in the mighty name of Jesus. We paralyze and cut the heads of our Goliath and with the fire of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every door that we have opened to the enemy be closed by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the power of the blood of Jesus be released on our behalf and let it speak against our condition in Jesus mighty name. Every power circulating our names in witchcraft meetings scatter by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, anoint us to succeed in every areas of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we decree possibilities and breakthroughs to replace difficulties and problems. In Jesus' mighty name, let every evil eye monitoring our lives go blind by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, this year shall not steal our blessings away. In Jesus' mighty name, every evil hand removing the seed of fruitfulness 
brokenness from our lives. Return it. Return it and die in the mighty name of Jesus. Any bondage anywhere tying us down. We lose ourselves by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We lose ourselves by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we shout victory. We know that we have the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. We cannot be conquered. We cannot be defeated, oppressed in Jesus' mighty name. Every agent pulling us in the heart bondage of stagnation, be bound, be bound in the mighty name of Jesus. Every yoke of stagnation and sorrow, be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Every chain of sluggishness, break by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Evil covenants backing up long-term afflictions in our lives and in the lives of our children. Be broken, be broken, be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. We withdraw our lives and the lives of our children from the season of shame and disgrace in Jesus' mighty name. Every evil storage in our lives causing fruitfulness on our part come out by fire in Jesus' mighty name. Arrows of hard battles come out now from our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We reject bad news and poverty in our generation in Jesus' mighty name. Any cobweb sent to introduce hard bondage into our lives. Catch fire, catch fire, catch fire and die in Jesus' Jesus mighty name and a negative dream causing near success syndrome in our lives be cancelled be cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus we renounce evil pattern of failure and disappointments at the edge of good news in the mighty name of Jesus every form of stagnation attacking our progress come out come out come out in the mighty name of Jesus every form of stagnation attacking the progress of our children come out come out come out in the mighty name of Jesus any evil mark in our bodies and the bodies of our children causing rejection and hatred in our lives be cancelled by the blood of Jesus any negative word statement producing negative results in our lives and in the lives of our children be nullified in the mighty name of Jesus be nullified in the mighty name of Jesus every secret sins causing problems in our lives come out with all your roots in Jesus mighty name we rebuke any generational curses of thou shall not go far in the mighty name of Jesus and we receive the victory as we repent we receive the victory for our children. We receive a turnaround in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father Lord, thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your word that deliver us from shame and sin and disgrace, Lord God. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for the deliverance power that is in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that you did, you are doing and about to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we agree in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Father Lord, for your Holy Spirit. There is a person here, God is saying that you're going to have to get rid of all cards in your house. Cards. You have cards, not tarot cards. You have just gaming cards and you like to pr play with those cards. Sometimes money, people come to your home and you do bettings. And this is how you spend some of your time. And another thing God is showing me, dice. You have dice at home. You have these things and you think that this is entertainment. That is how your friends come to your house on a weekend and you drink and you begin to play the dice and the cards and you bet. And that is how you spend the weekend with your friends. God is saying that as long as your house is a house of, of, of gambling and these things, it will not be well with you. Repent, beloved sister, God's warrior. This is a sin before God and that is the root of your problem because you have turned your house not into a house of prayer but a house of gambling and that is not of God. We are not to proceed like that. And as you repent, may the good Lord begin to restore you and resurrect everything that has been dead. Speak to your husband, beloved sister. This live stream will be later uploaded on YouTube. Share with him and say, I will no longer be a partaker of what God has already rejected and reproved because I don't want to be accursed. All right, hallelujah. And as you repent, may the good Lord begin to do something new in your life. And as you repent, and as you repent, let the Lord begin to restore you as his anger has now been lifted from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, ancient 
ancient of days hallelujah father lord hallelujah almighty god thank you father thank you jesus thank you for all that you did thank you that for all that you are doing and about to do almighty god i worship you lord and i honor you lord and i thank you father and i thank you jesus and i thank you father hallelujah there is a person here that god is showing me that you have an aquarium all right you have like a aquarium in your home and you keep fish in that aquarium but every time you put the fish in there you neglect the fish and they die and then it's like a hobby but god is saying do not mess with my creation if you don't have time to look after that aquarium don't have one keeping animals and having pets is for people who number one can afford it number two can look after them that is not of god Okay? You are to repent. God has that against you. You are a nice person, but don't play with his creation. His creation is not a hobby. You are buying the fish. One time you are serious with the aquarium, and then you, you, you are not serious with it, and they die, and there is a stench. And then you start all over again. Repent. Right, capital me. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here just to... To, to reveal to you what God is showing me so that you will repent. Little things like that can make God upset. And you are a child of God. Write capital me. Write capital me very quickly. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying what the Lord is showing to me. That is wrong. And you are to ask him for forgiveness by writing capital me. And I will pray for you. Don't take too long. Just be obedient. Okay? Because don't waste God's time. God is, is sovereign and his time is very precious. And don't waste our time either. Okay? Because we are gathered here not for ourselves but for the Lord. Just identify yourself by writing capital me. You that have this aquarium in your home. Okay? I can see that is a big one. Write capital me very quickly, repent. or not here to judge you or to pass judgment against you. It's just a word that God has wants to relay to you so that you can repent. All right? Just write capital me. That's all it is. You don't have to do anything else. And I will stand in agreement in prayer as you ask God to forgive you. Write capital me very quickly. You that have this Aquarius... It's a place that you put fish in it, but you are not serious with them, with the fish. Sometimes you look after, sometimes you don't and, don't, and they end up dying. God is saying, do not mess with my creation. If you don't have the time to keep them, repent, beloved, okay? Hallelujah. As you have confessed your sin before God, I pray that he will forgive you in the mighty name of Jesus for your courage as well. Hallelujah. The person has identified. Hallelujah. And I'm sure God is ministering to them right now. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. There is a gentleman here. You are communicating with a lady on Facebook, but you are married. Be very careful. The Lord is warning you. How can one take fire into his bosom and not burn? If you keep that communication with that lady, soon you're going to be going to a certain hotel or motel. And that is God warning you to be careful. You are falling into sin. Already adultery is in your heart. All you're waiting is to, cons to, to consummate that adultery. Repent. Write capital me. Block that lady. Tell her, Mary, I cannot continue this conversation with you. Bye. And block the person before he goes too far. It's a warning from God. I see you on Facebook Messenger texting this lady back and forth. It will not be well with you. You will plunge into sin. You cannot do this. You're married. You cannot continue to communicate with women. You will take fire into your bosom and you will be burned. I'm not judging you. Neither with the saints are I here judging you. It's just a message as a warning to you. Warning comes before destruction. So write capital me to identify. And as you identify, the Lord will begin to give you the courage and the strength to say no to sin, to say no to that that can 
can divert you, can shift you from the presence of God to the presence of Satan. Write capital me. Heed to the warning of God and write capital me. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not better than you. But God is warning you. It's a warning from God. You continue with that conversation on Facebook Messenger, it will not be well with you. You are texting this lady back and forth. Don't do it anymore, beloved. Okay? If you continue, you're going to find yourself in adultery. Hallelujah. The person has identified. Glory be to God. Is there anyone here you heard the gospel of God? And you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You would like to surrender your life to Jesus. Right, capital me. You that would like to surrender your life to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right, capital me. Don't be ashamed. This is the best decision you will ever make in your life. Beloved sister Elizabeth, you are welcome into the kingdom of God. Richie, Miraculous Jackson, a.k.a. Stuke Sprint, Brother Daniel, Chris, Yusa something. You are welcome onto the kingdom of Christ Jesus, including Miraculous Jackson, Tom Morris. You are welcome. Fiona, Yusa something something, Lady Biana. You are very welcome to the kingdom of Christ Jesus, Raymond. LK, as the ambassadors of the kingdom of Christ Jesus, we welcome you all onto his kingdom. This is the best decision you've may ever made in your life. Okay? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And as you have surrendered your life to Christ, you're going to need a King James Bible. If you are an English speaking person. Okay? And I want to say this to you. Now that you've accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, you cannot go back to your sin to do that that is wicked before God. You have to continue in the right path of righteousness. And I want to say this to you, saints. What has taken place today is that the Lord Jesus himself arose from his throne and completely blotted out your name from the book of hell and eternal damnation. So that when you die, you will not perish, but inherit everlasting life. Therefore, he has now written your name in his book of life. It means that you are now in covenant with Christ Jesus. That, dog, that covenant that you had with Satan has been broken because you surrender your life to Christ. All right. If you can join a local congregation so that you can be baptized in the waters, that will be perfect. But I'm equally always here by God's grace from Monday to Saturdays. UK hour, London to be more specific, from 1 p.m. to 2.30. So check what time that will be in your own country, all right? So that um, you can be on the live stream on time. All right, beloved? Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. And also... I want to say this to you. Keep yourself pure in the presence of Almighty God. Okay? Don't think that you can come one day to the live stream and tomorrow you are not here. You will be a casualty. Stand firm in the presence of God. Don't abandon God. Be in the presence of God so that He can speak to you. We are fasting up to the 31st of this month of December and our fasting ends with the Holy Communion. You are invited to fast with us. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You are allowed to drink water, coffee, or tea. No sugar, no milk, or honey. Just plain. And constant presence of, of God in your life by reading the scriptures. All right? Hallelujah. Join us. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay? If you can. If you are in good health as well. All right? I would, I would also remind you for Holy Communion on the 30th, which is a, fr a Saturday, sorry. Make sure you buy your matzo bread and your uh, grape juice. You can find matzo bread, which is Jewish bread, okay, on Amazon or eBay if you cannot source it from your local supermarket. But make sure you are part of the Holy Communion, all right? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 
I also want to remind all of you on this platform of fake profiles using my image to contact you and ask you for all sorts of things. Report and block them. I only have this page. I'm only here. I don't have no other alternative pages. They are fake accounts. Okay, I have to put the warning out there so that you won't be a vis victim. The fasting has started, beloved sister Glean. Okay, but you can join us. You're still on time to join. Don't worry. We started on the 15th. So you can still join us. No problem. All right. The corporate fasting happens also always on this ministry from 15th to the last day of the month. And we always end our fasting with Holy Communion. You are very welcome, beloved sister Glean. Now, saints of Almighty God, um, if you would like to donate to this ministry and you think you can be a blessing because God is touching your heart, the information is equally available here on my bio. All you need to do is on my bio, you will see the link there and also the link to YouTube. It would be good if you could subscribe so that if you miss any ministration because you were at work, you work shift patterns or the internet was playing up, you can always catch up. Oh, if you need to rewatch something because you missed something or you want to rewatch, the channel is there so that all of you can um, catch up, okay? For whatever reason. That, and also so that you can see previous ministrations, watch previous ministrations. I don't know if any of you, okay, are battling with certain things that I did not cover here, but believe me, there are a lot of ministrations on that page that can be beneficial to your walk with Christ. All right? Hallelujah. So saints, let me pray for all of you before you leave the live stream so that you will, the Lord will accompany you to where you go. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for each one of your servants that came to this live stream today. Father Lord, as they leave this live stream, I'm asking you, Father Lord, to forgive their sins, to be a wall of fire and a protection around them. Continue, Father Lord, to anoint their heads with your oil of gladness, establishing them always over their pairs in the mighty name of Jesus. Order their steps, Jehovah, so that they will always be at the right place and at the right time in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the works of their hands so that in all they shall be fruitful and multiply. Father Lord, I pray for good health, prosperity, success, elevation, unmerited favor. I pray for promotion. I pray for deliverance to take place, Lord God, in their lives and resurrection power to go to where things are dead and bring them back to life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you that you will visit today with your divine mercies, Father Lord. Beloved Sister Gail Ned, Lori Noble's grave, Family members Anthony, Caden, JC, Nick, Daddy Leo, Brenda Pizarro, Geraldine Collins, Selena Bradley, Tyron Harris, Giovanka Gregorius, Jalimar Diamond, Adrian Galloway, Alice Codeo, AGC Wholesales, Byron Dumas, Carolyn Chambers, Rikita Waller, parents Raymond Renova, family members Kenley, Keisha, Kelvin, Kaylee Cameron, Lathan Prout, Harold Richardson. Father Lord, I'm asking you in the mighty name of Jesus, arise, Father Lord, from your throne of grace and gr glory, Lord God, and, uh, uh, and pour onto these children, Father Lord, all the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28. Father Lord, I pray that you will cover them with the precious blood of your son Jesus, so that everything that they'll touch, it will be fruitful and multiply. I speak over their lives, all the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. I speak resurrection power over their health, their finances, their careers, their ministries, their projects. Father Lord, resurrect their, de their destinies and the destinies of their children. Open doors of unmerited favor, divine connections unto them. Father Lord, allow them to draw from, from the earth's heavenly resources, Lord God. And Father Lord, I pray that you will summon from the four corners of the world all their destiny help us to locate them and to bless them according to your will and purpose for them. In Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, begin to visit Sister Elaine Todd, Rose Beba and daughter, Zamely Jackson, Lorian Baker, Jordan Eganda, Ruth Lua, Iro Sport, 
import our products chosen for such a time as this. Vanny Septon, Jasmine Mitchell, Simone Morgan, Antoinette Lewis, Michelle Wallace and husband Wade, Natasha Fogel, children Jordan and Junior, Jenna Webby Hair Care, Asila Preston, children Tristan and Ryan, Mama Hurley, Roberta Davis, Karen Adelie Moss, Joyce Backus, Mariam Freddy, Deidre Sanderson, Shanette Jenks, Jenkins and Sun Naza, Craig White, Tropic Bay Boutique, Daughters Kelaya and Anisha, arise Jehovah from your heavenly thrones and in the mighty name of Jesus, surround these saints with your glory, surround these saints with your presence, let the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 10, 28 locate them and never let go of them. Father Lord, I speak over their lives, resurrection power over their health, their finances, their careers, their ministries, over their destinies and the destinies of their children. Father Lord, I speak divine protection over their lives. Surround them with your angels. Father Lord, be a wall of fire and a protection around them. Father Lord, I pray for elevation. I pray, Father Lord, for promotion. I pray, Father Lord, that doors will open to them according to the book of Revelations. Doors that no man can shut, even the devil himself, in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, visit Father Lord in in your mercies, beloved sister Angie Newman, Felicia Toe, Noel Lucian, Tas Flumu, Tamisha Brown, aka Golden Lattice, Tarmisha Tar Tar Hayes and the Hayes household, and Shimori Chanel, her daughter, Kim Layman, Andrew Apostolo from Value Stores, Rachel Reed, Mrs. Martin, Selena Bradley, Erin Jones, parents Brenda and George, Elizabeth Dadis, and daughter Sarah Oguto, Stacy Cunningham, Jewel Sample. Husband Dishon, Amanda Bacchus, Wafisa Bacchus, Titi Ray and daughter Abibatu, Kelvin Calix, Tawana Watson, Farah Hendrickson, Brenda Togo, Gayla Nisu, Sister Michelle and her ministry, Stepile Endless Malale, daughter Vunene, Mother Busiviwi, Sister Bongekile, Brother Sidney, Sister Nisi B, Doris, Nkechi Kamara, and Shane Furtado. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, arise from your heavenly thrones. And Father Lord, visit these children of yours. Oh, Father Lord, uh, under your mercy, not your wrath. Extend your hands of forgiveness. Father Lord, bless their goings and their comings. Begin to open doors of unmerited favor unto them, of divine connections. Father Lord, I speak resurrection power over their health, their finances their careers, their ministries, and their destinies, Lord God, and their children's destinies. Father Lord, I'm asking you today for unmerited favor to locate them today. Summon from the four corners of the world. Their destiny help us to locate them and bless them according to your will and purpose, Father Lord, to their lives. Father Lord, I speak over their lives health and prosperity. And Father Lord, I speak over their lives success, elevation, Father Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Beloved saints, go in peace and remember, you are more than a conqueror in the mighty name of Jesus. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Have a wonderful day. May the good Lord continue to bless you, to uplift you, and may he continue to show you the way forward in Christ Jesus. 